Those who make their living on the front lines of emergency medicine know a split second can change a life forever. The story is not a recreation. It's a first-hand look at Pinellas County EMS in Florida, where a commitment to saving lives sometimes means going far beyond what's expected. January 22, 1993, 9.30 p.m. Most motorcycle accidents I've seen have been pretty tragic. You just expect the worst. Hi, guys. When we arrived on scene, they said the patient that was on the motorcycle had no obvious injuries. You guys just going to the closest hospital? We didn't think we had any more patients, but we did. Kid him. The dog had been struck by the motorcycle. Someone shine a flashlight in his mouth, please. The chest feels intact. The guys are kind of looking at me like, what are we doing? You know, this is a dog. Start lying on him. But there comes a time where you got to say, you know, if I've got the equipment and I've got the manpower to do it and the know-how, yeah. then why not do it? Can get a possible ETA on the uh, SPCA if they do have someone available to respond out here? Is that IV still going? Yep. Okay. SPCA doesn't know how long it's going to take to get a driver, an emergency driver here to take care of this. Yeah. So we're going to go to the Beltroad Animal Hospital. I've dealt with them before. I've taken these animals there before. They've got no problem with accepting them. Okay. I know. I'll hope for the best, but right now I wouldn't say it looks too good. Update on the condition. Within 30 minutes of the accident, the Beagle arrives at Bluffs Animal Hospital. This is Heidi. There was a gentleman riding his motorcycle and here on the side. She's got some, the only obvious injury she's got is here. She's got a lot Dr. Of Donald problems. Morgan takes over her care. So she's definitely got a head injury? Mm hmm She's got a concussion. She's got nystagmus going on. So it's good. She had a fracture of her jawbone, which involved the nasal passages and nasal septum. Well, if the head injury is, is not a serious problem to her, the, the leg can be fixed. The most urgent Hi. thing Hi. was actually keeping the patient stabilized and trying to get her through the evening as quietly and peacefully as possible. Thanks again for your help, Doc. All right. Good luck to you, Heidi. Thank you. Emergency on Gloucester Bay Show. A motorcycle just ran into a car and a guy flew about 100 feet. Highland and Gloucester. 9 p.m. the next night. A call comes in about another motorcycle accident. Gloucester Bay Ball. Okay, is he still down? Yeah, this guy flew through the air about... Okay, they're already on the way. The nearest ambulance is sent to the scene. Mark Green, 288 out. One more among those responding is firefighter paramedic Wendy Campbell. When I actually saw the motorcycle, and it was in two pieces, I thought, man, this guy probably is dead. Where are they? It's over this way, right here. And then the LZ is right up there. You see what you still He was unresponsive, so we knew that at very least he had a bad head injury. It takes your brain only between four and six minutes to begin to die. I called for Bay Flight. Bay Flight nurse Michelle Bansavage arrives and takes over the young man's care. He must have been traveling at a very high rate of speed. The back of the car was severely damaged, so you know he hit it at full force. I was just expecting to see everything on him broken. Suction! Get that. Anything to mop with. Suction. Somebody! Come on. Sorry, I got the, I got the ID. You want to try to push that again? We got the ID now. Yeah. You got all the straps on? No, straps on? Not at all. Get those on real quick while I'm drawing this up. You got it. You see a needle with it, too. Like... Open up your mouth there, guy. My major concern was to make sure his airway was secured. It's all a beat-the-clock situation. If he did have something severe going on in his brain that we were unaware of at the time, the trauma center was a place to be to take care of that. When 18-year-old Terry Troutman arrives at Bayfront Medical Center, a trauma team is standing by, led by Dr. Thomas Wells. Motorcycle rider is going to tend to hit head first. I was expecting a massive head injury. A lot of vomit. Okay, x-ray pelvis. Shooting. Uh, shooting. So far, it looks like 
We don't have any fractures, but I'm worried about does he have a brain injury that needs to be treated with uh, urgent surgery or not, and does he have intra-abdominal hemorrhage. And so we're going to do at this point, since everything else is stable now, and everything else has been looked at quickly, is we're going to get a CAT scan of brain and the belly. He's got one mark here. He's got a mark on this eyelid, mm -hmm. and he's got a broken tooth over here. Okay. And a little abrasion on his leg, and that's it. I don't know whether that's a contusion. You know, Terry had clearly sustained a major brain injury. He's got a little bleeding right along the edge of the brain. We call that a subdural hematoma. So that tells you that he took quite a hit on the brain. Um, he's got some, uh, an area of bruised brain right here which could swell. If his brain swelling is not controlled, um, that, that can kill. How many people are there? Bruce and Ginger Troutman are waiting for word on their son's condition. That is the worst possible way to meet a family. All of a sudden, I have to tell them that, uh, that their son is critically injured and uh, may not survive. That's a very difficult thing to do. It looks like he's got a, um, a bruise on his brain on the left side right here, and there's a small area of bleeding. Okay? I'm, s I'm sorry, man. Okay. Fortunately, he was wearing a helmet. Okay? Fortunately, we don't see a major cervical spine injury. All right, and fortunately, I don't see anything else wrong. All right, so um, so it's a, it's a bad injury, but but we've taken care of much worse. Okay. They've given him some medication. Um, come on in. They've given him some medication that that's why he's not going to be moving. It's very difficult to look at a child laying there helpless, and you can't fix it anymore. My mind automatically jumped to, is he going to come out of it or not? And then I had to push that thought back because that would make me sick. Mom and Dad are here. Okay, Bob? We're here with you, son. I want you to know that. I was so overwhelmed seeing the physical condition that he was in. In a matter of minutes, I probably went through my son's 18 years of life from the minute he was born up to this point and saying, hey, no, I'm not prepared for it to go out this way. All right, I'll check you later. Thanks, Thank Dr. The next morning, further tests reveal that Terry's brain swelling has gotten worse. Terry. Squeeze Dad's hand. You got the whole family here with you. Everybody's waiting to come in and see you. We're trying to give him Terry. every bit of encouragement that we can to beat the odds. Terry. Terry. I know from watching the monitors, depending on what subjects that I talk to him about, I could make his heartbeat go up and down. I know at that point that even though he wasn't looking at me, he wasn't watching me, that he could hear what I was saying. I just need to let you know that we're here. Thank you again that we love you, son. While Heidi the Beagle recovers from the motorcycle accident, the motorcyclist involved comes to visit her and her owner. I made a left turn to go home, and then out of the corner of my eye, I saw a flash. I woke up in the x-ray room, and I started crying because I, th I felt bad for the dog. I mean, I thought it died. I mean, I love animals, and it hurt a lot. We're both lucky. Yeah, both. The paramedics did an excellent job of taking care of Heidi. That type of care instantly on the site of the accident really saved this dog's life. There's not words to say to somebody, just hugs, just thank you to everybody that was involved in saving Heidi. The paramedics, the firemen, the policemen. They burn. Thank God for all of them. Broken. Are you all right? The helmet saved my life. I mean, that's, without the helmet, I, would, I wouldn't be here. Four days after his accident, Terry Troutman is out of the coma and off the respirator. You know where you're at? Mm. You're in the hospital. I was quite surprised at how many people came up to see me every day. It helped out. Do you remember 
Uh-uh. What happened to you? Uh-uh. Do you want to know? Yeah. You were going it just made me today. feel that I was special because so many people did care. Came and got you. And now you're in Bayfront Medical Center. Are you going to be okay? <laughs> Terry was hospitalized for three and a half weeks, and eight months later, is still undergoing therapy. They had to teach me how to walk again. I could not walk, and I lost the hearing in my right ear. But I'm glad that I'll be able to continue on the way I was before. I look more into the future now, instead of just looking day by day. Before the accident, I really didn't talk to my brother, Sean. Um, we didn't have the same things in common. But he's taught me a lot. He taught me how to dance, which is when we get along a lot better than we did before. How fake can we get? <laughs> he's a pain in the ass, but <laughs> it wouldn't be the same without him. We just sit there and watch him and get tickled. Because it's something we might never have seen. And had he not had a helmet on, we wouldn't have seen it at all. He had never had the chance to grow up. I definitely would say thank you to everybody that was there that helped me out. The ambulances, the fire trucks, the police officers, if they didn't get there in time, I'd say it's a good chance that I would have died right then. When I hit the car, I landed on my head. That's how I landed on my head. If I was to have a, a no helmet, my head probably would have exploded. If you're going to buy a motorcycle, pay the money and get the best helmet you can. It's going to save your life. This is definitely his second chance. He's getting a second chance on life. And that's something that not too many people can say.